best selling DIYs. I started my business before I had my YouTube channel making these and that's kind of where it all started. Saving scrap wood, any type of scrap wood that I could find, um, that's, that's what I used. And I would get a pile together and then I would turn them into signs. And it, it always sells so well. And you can do so many different um, styles and for every season, every uh, holiday, personalize them. There's so many possibilities and you don't need any fancy tools. That's the big thing about this DIY. You don't have to spend a whole bunch of money on special equipment, special products. All you need is a printer and you don't even need a laser jet printer. You can use an ink jet printer. I'll show you today an example of a sign that I did with a ink jet printer. Computer paper, Mod Podge, scrap wood, and some chalk paint. That's all you need to make these DIYs. Uh, so I'm going to show you today um, some examples, give you some inspiration, and uh, guide you along because in my comments in my videos this technique seems to be what I get the most questions from. People asking me um, to guide them along while they're doing it. They have a little bit of trouble with it. The first thing that I say to people is if you're having trouble with this technique, it could possibly be a few things and we'll go over that today as I'm doing them step by step and tell you. But if you are having problems and you just can't figure it out, follow me over on Instagram or Facebook and if you can send me pictures of your project that didn't work out for you, I can look at it and I can tell you right away probably where the problem started and how to correct it. So that's a great um, option for you if you are, are having trouble with this technique. Get in touch with me over on those other platforms where you can send me photos and I'll guide you along. And we got our first question that came in and fire away those questions. I'll try to answer them the best that I can. This technique is the one that I get the most questions for. How do you transfer white font rather than black font? Okay, so I will tell you that you can't print white ink. There's no way, I don't know of a printer myself that prints white ink. And you either have the option of colored ink or a black ink. But the way that you can get around that is if you're painting your piece of wood a specific color, like a darker color than white, and then you wanted a white letter on top of that, I would do this technique with black ink and then paint on top of it. You'll have to be kind of steady with your hand and your paintbrush, but you definitely can paint over top of those letters with white paint, and then you've transformed your black letters into white letters on a different colored background. Hope that helps. If not, if you don't want to do that, then you're really your only other option is to use a Cricut and then do your vinyl and do it that way. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the camera down and we're going to work away. These are some of my finished signs. All of these are scrap wood. I did not buy any of this wood. It's all scrap wood given for free or I've picked it out of a wood pile and brought it home and turned it into signs. So this first one is just a hunk of old barn board painted with some chalk paint. This technique works best on um, a chalk painted surface. And then I added my graphics on top of it. If you want to make money selling signs, there's a few things to think about before you go right into it. The first thing is do something that's modern, something that's popular. Go to Etsy, research what's selling the best, and then use those graphics. The other option is, of course, I have all kinds of uh, graphics in my Etsy store. If you want to pick up those, you can do this technique with any of the graphics that I have in my Etsy store, and um, you're good to go. You don't know, need to worry about designing your own. I don't have any copyright issues, so you can use any of my graphics craft with them, make a sign, and then sell them. I don't have a problem with that. I have a couple options with my graphics. I have a new graphic club that I just created that is fantastic. And you sign up for a monthly membership 
and every graphic that I designed that month gets sent to your inbox and it, you can download them, print them, use them whenever you want. So it's $6.99 a month. I think this month is finishing up tomorrow and I ended up doing 30 graphics. So you're gonna get 30 graphics in your inbox if you sign up for that membership. I'll put the link down below. It's through my Patreon if you wanna do that. Um, if not, head to my Etsy store and you can grab any of these and just buy one graphic at a time. So here's some other examples. Again, these are just scrap pieces of wood. You want to stay, if you're going to, going to be selling them, um, do a neutral color. Don't do funky colors. And I'll tell you why, because white goes with everybody's house. So if you're making a sign with white paint, somebody can pick that up and it's going to match their home decor. If you do one that's purple, you're gonna be really limited to who's gonna be able to buy that sign. So stick to neutral colors and when you're doing your signs. So here's another, just a hunk of wood. Now what I like to do, I like the distressed look. So I always do two different colors. I'll do the black as my base coat, and then I'll do the white on top, distress around the edges. They sell really well. And some people, I always get hate in the comments. Farmhouse is old, farmhouse is done. Nobody buys these things. Well, they still are in my area. I know everybody's area is different. You have to test the waters, see what sells best where you are, and um, and then go from there. But around here, these still sell really good, and people love to just kind of throw these up on a little shelf or a tiered tray. If you can find the wood for free and do these, even better. So there's a couple more examples. This one's beautiful. I love this one, especially for spring. Farmhouse in French country, it's still big in some places, so embrace it. This is all about making some extra spending money. Make extra spending money just to buy more craft supplies or help with the household bills or whatever you need to make extra money for. Um, do some research and this stuff still sells for me. These ones are, these would be really great just to pop on your deck in the summer by a potted flower. Um, do the white and the black and they'll, they'll sell. So this is an example. I love this little rooster. This one here I did on my inkjet printer. So it can be done. You can use an inkjet printer to do a transfer. You have to go a little bit slower. You have to take your time, but it can be done. And you can see how vibrant the colors are in this one. It works. So if you don't have a laser jet printer, don't click off and go, oh, I can't do this because you can. You can use an inkjet printer. I have two or three videos on my channel that um, show the comparison between the inkjet and the laser jet. And I have a couple just designated to using your inkjet printer, doing a transfer technique, and how you can get it to work the best for you. So this is proof an inkjet printer will work. This is a perfect one for Father's Day, gone fishing. Just a little sign that you can make. Um, we're getting into, uh, craft sale season, yard sale season, uh, Father's Day, these little things, scrap wood, you can, uh, and I mean, this is just rustic. I got paint everywhere and they still, that makes them look even more authentic and uh, they sell really well, the gone fishing. And of course, if you are handy with designing your own graphics, you can do gone hunting, gone fishing, gone shopping for Mother's Day, uh, all kinds of different ideas. So that's one that you can do. Here is an example of gift tags. These, this wood right here, I get out of my Home Depot bin. Fantastic, so, and this was free. Hunk of twine from the dollar store, free piece of uh, MDF from Home Depot, a little bit of chalk paint and a graphic, you're good to go. This is one of my favorite um, graphics and one of my most popular ones. Coffee house, these are great for coffee bar. Most popular, again, you stick to the black and white. This is a hanger. I pick these up. You can find these on Amazon. Sometimes I get them on eBay. They're really, really cheap on eBay. AliExpress, Timu, you can find the hangers for the back and buy them in bulk if you're gonna be making a lot. So that's just an example of some of the signs that I finished. I've got some on the go here, ready to do. This one I haven't put in, I haven't put on my wood yet, so we're gonna do that. Mod Podge mat. 
it's all you need. You can also use a Mod Podge gloss, but um, be mindful if you're using a gloss, then you are going to have a glossy finish. These ones are done on my laser jet printer. I printed them off. Make sure if you're doing this, you're reversing your text. If you're buying my graphics, one of the files are already reversed, so you don't need to worry about that. But if you're making your own, make sure you're reversing your text. Just put a light amount of Mod Podge on and then center it. I'm not very good about using a ruler. I just kind of use my eyes and eyeball it. But if you're just starting, you might want to measure and make sure you have it exactly where you want it. I'm gonna put a light coat on here. You don't need very much. If you use too much, this is one of the main questions or one of the main concerns that I get when doing this technique is I've done my transfer and I can see the outline of where my graphic was. What causes that is too much Mod Podge. Mod Podge is thick. So if you're putting gobs of it on your graphic and then pressing it down on your sign, you're gonna see that outline of where the Mod Podge is. You don't need very much to do a transfer, just a light amount. So where I get my wood, um, I ask friends and family. I and, and I, most of my wood comes from friends and family. If you go to Home Depot, you can go to the back of Home Depot where they cut their wood and they have a bin there at mine anyways. And all the scrap little pieces of wood are there. You can go in, you can grab them and take them for free. So check that area out. Uh, we also have a great big wood pile at our dump. We can't go into the landfill, but you can go to the wood pile and you can grab pieces of wood there if that is an option for you in your area. So that's all there is to this. I'm gonna set this aside and um, let it sit overnight. I like to leave it for 24 hours, let it dry really well before we go on to the next step. The next step is a little dish of water and a little sponge. And you're just going to just wet your paper until you can start to see your graphics show through. Use the cheapest computer paper that you can find. If you're using a thick computer paper, you're gonna have more paper to rub off, if that makes sense. So buy the cheapest stuff. I just buy the Amazon paper, computer paper, the cheap, I think it's Amazon Basics. It's a nice, thin, cheap paper, and it works great for this technique. Now this one I did use a little bit of color, but generally when I'm making signs, I don't use any color. I just stick with the black and the white and do a very basic, just distressed look. Um, I'm just dipping my finger in the water if it dries out a little bit and just doing a small area at a time and rubbing off the paper. It's great doing it in real time because then you can see how long it takes to actually rub off the paper. Sometimes with the magic of a video, I make it look very easy and it looks like it's done in one minute. And that's not the case. It does take some time and some patience, but I'll show you up close here. So I've done this area and see how nice and crisp it is. This is with the laser jet printer. Now, if you're using an inkjet printer, you're gonna find that your, your lettering is a little bit more faded, more, but some people like that look. It's more of a faded, uh, dull look with the inkjet. If you're doing a lot of signs, I would just invest in a laser jet printer. They're not as expensive as they used to be. They've really come down in price. Uh, I think you can pick one up for under $300 now. And I know that seems like a lot of money, but if you're gonna turn this into a little bit of a business, then definitely getting a laser jet printer is going to be a benefit for you because it's gonna save you a lot of time. If you've tried this technique and you're having any problems or any concerns or want some guidance, just ask away and I'll try and help you. And that's it. So when I finish these, I like to seal them up with a polyacrylic sealer. You can use a spray or you can get the can or you can even use a wax if you want. Whatever you have in your stash. You don't have to go out and buy anything really special. Do you re recommend a color laser jet or a black? Okay, so here's where I'm at. I My laser jet printer only prints in black ink. I am really considering buying a colored laser jet, but I just haven't pulled the plug yet. The reason being is because I can I can do my transfers in color on my inkjet. So I just haven't, because the colored laser jets are still expensive. They run anywhere between three and $400. Um, 
where the black one, black ink laser jet printers are a lot cheaper. So I just haven't pulled the plug. I don't know if I'm going to, because like I said, this was on my inkjet. I can make it work. So fool around with it if you're thinking. If you already have an inkjet, see if you can get it to work for your transfers. If you can't, then you might want to um, consider buying a colored laser jet and it will work. Okay, so Tammy just said she checked on Amazon and she found a laser jet printer for $249. Yeah, that's kind of the going, that's probably the going, but a laser jet printer, my goodness, the ink in those things will last you forever. I can print off, I don't even remember the last time I put ink in my printer, my laser jet, a long time ago, and I print a lot. I'm making videos, I'm, I'm filming videos almost every day using this technique and printing off hundreds and hundreds of graphics and, um, I don't think I have put in a new cartridge in six months. So you're gonna save a lot of money on your ink if you buy a laser jack. My question is what kind of wood is the best to use? So my answer to that is any wood that you can find will work fine. But the one thing that you have to think about is the grain of your wood. Whatever wood you're using, you want it to be smooth because if you're using a wood that has all kinds of grains and nooks and crannies, you can imagine how hard it is going to be to rub off all of that paper. Any type of wood will work as long as it's a smooth piece of wood and it's painted with chalk paint. It's a little bit more difficult to do this technique on bare wood. Um, you can do it, I have done it lots, but if you're just beginning, don't start with a bare piece of wood. Start with a piece of wood that you have painted with chalk paint. This technique does not work well on top of latex paint. You, it works best with the chalk paint. So if you have some latex paint, mix up a little bit of it into some chalk paint and then do this technique. So here's another one that's almost done. I just like dipping my fingers in and just going kind of in a circular motion. If you were using an inkjet printer, you would not be able to be as aggressive as I am being. Uh, with the inkjet printer, you have to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more light fingered to take a little bit more time or you're gonna start rubbing that ink off. A laser printer, you can go to town. It can, you can really scrub at it and you're not gonna hurt it. So this one's done. It's ready to um, be sealed up and it will, perfect shelf sitter. I sell these all the time. These get made. I and they sell. So the next thing I probably should talk about, where do I sell my things? Where should you sell your things? Um, you have a lot of options. Etsy is one place. I am in Canada. So the Etsy option for me is not a good option because our, um, can this technique be done on any type of metal as well? Certainly can be done on metal. I'm gonna squirrel on you guys because you're asking me questions and, and I'm gonna be all over the place. Uh, you can do it on metal, spray it first with a primer, paint it with chalk paint, and then do the technique. You cannot just do it on bare metal. It would just rub right off. Um, okay, selling. If Etsy for us here in Canada for shipping a product, our shipping costs are really, really high. So if I was to sell a sign like this on Etsy, it would cost me almost $15 just to ship it. That doesn't include the cost of the sign. So it's just not a viable option for me anyways with the product that I make to sell on Etsy. Um, so your next option is Facebook Marketplace. Sell it locally on Facebook Marketplace. I sell a lot of signs, a lot of my signs just on Facebook Marketplace. Put a listing up, your listing is free. Sometimes I'll group three or four signs together and sell them that way. Or you have Kijiji or whatever online uh, marketplace you have in your area, that would be something to try. Another thing that you can do is make up a sample box of signs that you've made. So I would take four or five or 10 or 20 of my signs, put them in a nice box and Go to some of your local stores, your local home decor stores. Show them what you're making. Ask if they'd be interested in buying some signs for you from you wholesale. Or maybe it's something you wanna do on consignment, but you kinda gotta put your feet onto the pavement and go out and show yourself off. Show, show people 
what you have to sell and would they be interested in buying from you or doing something on, on commission. And that's another way of selling your signs. Um, friends and family, doing custom stuff. You just get your word out, let people know what you're doing. And uh, sometimes they just sell themselves. Craft shows, flea markets, yard sales, uh, all those are really great options. I should show you guys because I made a um, ultimate craft show checklist. This is a booklet. It's in my Etsy store. It is everything that you need to run a craft sale or a yard sale. It's got receipts. It's got a sales tracker, an order form. Everything that you need when you go to a craft sale is on a checklist here. Uh, that might be something that you might be interested in if you want to get selling some signs and head to a craft show. This is going to keep you organized. So I'll put the link to this checklist down in my um, description and you can check that out too because I think that would be really helpful if you're just starting out to know what you need to get together and be organized for your craft sale. Just signed up for Patreon. That's awesome. So Debbie, if you just signed up uh, tomorrow or what's it, whatever the 31st is, the end of the month, Kirsten and I added up and I listed 30 graphics in my Etsy store this month. So all 30 of those graphics are going to come into your inbox and there's everything in there. There's photos, ephemera, motivational quotes, all kinds of great stuff that you're going to have a lot of fun with. So can you do this with a picture like with a family? Yes, you certainly can. Just print. So this right here, if you're doing it, uh, if you want a colored picture and you have to use your inkjet, um, print out your colored picture and do the transfer. I have a full tutorial on me doing a picture that I took and then printed off on my inkjet printer and did a transfer on it. It's a picture of uh, the beach and um, it's beautiful. So it can be done for sure. Okay, so that one's done. This one, perfect for Mother's Day. If you have a craft sale around that time, make all kinds of these, the perfect grandma, the perfect nanny, the perfect nana. Do some research, get all the different names of what grandmas are called because it's really hard for nana to find a sign that says nana. But if you can personalize one that says that, then you're going to make some sales with that. I wouldn't make a whole bunch of them. I would do more in the with grandma, but if you can throw in a mixture of different ways to say grandma and make them into signs, you'll do well with those. Can they be done on canvas? Absolutely, 100%. You can do this technique on basically anything as long as it's painted with chalk paint. I've done them on buckets and canvas and wood and fabric, um, basically anything. The only thing is, is you want to make sure whatever you're painting, the paint is going to stick to it. So spray it with a primer first, then put on your chalk paint and, and then do your transfer on top of that. So it, as long as you have that, whatever you're wanting to do the transfer on painted with some chalk paint, you can do it. I have basically done transfers on almost anything. And this one, I'm just gonna add a little bit more. I also have to pre-order, so if they want anything unique, they can, yeah. So I actually have in my Ultimate Craft Show checklist, I have a, um, a pre, I think there's a order form. So if you're doing personalized things, you can fill out the order form, get all of their information and uh, and have that handy. You can do personalized names. They do really well. Personalized Christmas ornaments. Um, if you can do per, if you can do custom ones for that of Christmas ornaments on like this, perfect way to make extra money. And I sell those from anywhere between eight and ten dollars when I personalize them. And this was free, free wood. My problem is I have no internet in my very small room. Oh, she's yeah, that's hard. It's hard if you don't have very good internet and then you want to sell online. But that could be a situation where you find some local stores, take a box full of your stuff with you, go in, introduce yourself, tell them you're interested in selling. Would they want to buy from you? I myself prefer to do wholesale and then I don't need to worry about it. I sell it 
to them. This is X amount of dollars of what I want for these. Um, and then let them sell it for whatever they want and you don't need to worry about it. I find with commission sometimes it's a little bit harder because you just have you just have to wait for them to sell it where if you're going in with wholesale just let them buy it and then they can do whatever they want with it one day at a time this is a really cute one too this can be stuck in a little uh, buffet or on a dresser how do you determine a price for your work okay let me just finish this one you can see how aggressively i am i'm rubbing at this okay so i also have. I pulled it out too because I knew these questions were going to get asked. I have a booklet on how to price your crafting projects. Now this is not going to work for everybody. If you're doing a project that's going to take you two weeks to make, you got all kinds of hours in it, this, this isn't going to work. This is for small projects like myself, the signs where I can whip them up quick. I don't have a lot of time or money into the actual product because I'm getting most of my wood for free. This formula works great. So this booklet's also in my Etsy store. I break down everything of how I price my products. And there's a video that correlates with this too. So it will step you through it. Um, how I calculate my wholesale cost, the item cost, how I calculate the retail cost and the item cost. So you can take your item that you're doing, break it all down and come to your wholesale or your retail cost. And then a summary here. So this is all in one booklet and it's the formula that I use to price my DIYs. So that's an option if you want. And like I said, there's also a video that goes with this too. And I'm gonna have a lot of links in the, in, in the description, but go through binge and get started. I'm basically going, I'm basically giving you enough information here that you can start a little side business just doing this and make some, some money. And this is exactly how I started. I started just by making little signs here and there. I got more requests for them. And then it was like, I can do this. I, I'm 54 years old. I have only been doing my YouTube channel for my 54 or 55. I don't know, 1967. And I, I wanted to have my own business. So I started doing this on the side, it took off. And then it was like, well, I can share, I can share all these techniques with people on a YouTube channel and show them how to do these. And hopefully they can in turn, either just have fun crafting, which is my main objective to teach you how to craft and have fun and relax. Or you can take these techniques and turn them into a little side business and uh, make it work for you. We are just scrubbing away here, getting all the paper off. I'm gonna bring this up a bit closer so you can see. And you can see how my wood is smooth. If you had a piece of wood that was rough, then, um, then it would be harder to rub off the graphics. And if it gets a little bit dry, just add a little bit more water. Now, a lot of people are concerned does it hurt, you know, does it hurt your fingers when you're rubbing it off? Myself, this is my take on it. This is exercise. I'm moving my shoulders and my neck and keeping me limber and going. So I start off, if you haven't done a lot of these, start off slow, do a couple signs, see how it is on your shoulder and your neck and your fingers, and then just build it up. It's like any type of exercise. The more you do, the better at it you're going to be, the more your body's going to be able to help you along. So the signs are so adorable. I see why they're so popular. They are. These are all, and you can see how they're just, they're, there's nothing fancy about them. One word. And that means that you can appeal to a broader audience. If I had something that was, you know, had a specific saying on it that would only be relatable to, um, I'm trying to think of something, like a farmer, like then you're limited to only being able to sell that sign to a farmhouse or a farm or a farmer's wife, where when you're doing like a gen just a generic word like sparkle, this can be for anybody. It can be for a mom, it can be for a grandma, it can be for a daughter, uh, it can be for a girlfriend. So just think about that when you're putting the signs together, what kind of audience or what kind of 
buyer would buy this sign. So this one right here, of course, it's kind of limited. This is going to be someone that's in a farmhouse or a farmer or something like that. You're gonna sell some of these, but you're not gonna sell a whole bunch of them. When I'm making something like this, you've got a broader market. You're gonna be able to sell more of them because it's more relatable to a lot of different people. I set up my Patreon not to, I, I set it up so you could save money. For this month in general, it's $6.99. You're getting 30 graphics. That, if you, I, I promise 20 graphics a month. And that works out to 35 cents a graphic, but you're getting 30. So it's more like 20 cents a graphic. And the listed in my Etsy store, they're $2.50 a piece. So I'm pay, I, I'm passing on some like severe savings uh, with the graphics. And that just means that you don't have to go to my Etsy store and buy them and spend $2.50 a piece for each graphic you can just get them sent to you automatically for less than 20 cents a piece. And if you wanna make these signs and make money, that's a huge savings uh, to, to craft with. So my main reason was to set this up was to have an affordable alternative to buy graphics that you can craft with or make signs to sell. I love making graphics. And if I can give you a graphic like this, for under 20 cents that you can use a hundred times if you want, save it to your computer, print it off later. And then that's, I'm all about that. So that's my main reason for doing my Patreon. Okay, it's also a tax deduction if you're doing it through your business. Exactly, if you have set up a business and you are making signs, uh, you can write off that subscription 100%. You gotta know about all that kind of stuff. And I don't, it, it probably is different in each, part of the world how the taxes and write-offs work. But here in Canada, if you have a business where you're selling signs and you're paying for a graphic subscription or you're buying graphics off of Etsy or you're buying manuals like these, you're writing these off, guys. You can write all of that off. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more water to this one. And that is so if, do any of you got any other questions about any of these sign making techniques or anything that i can help you out with um even after the live is done i'm still able to i make i I'm, shouldn't say i'm still able to i make the time to and i try i might not get to it that day or even a couple days but i try to answer every comment in every video. I take the time every day and sometimes it takes me a long time to get through all those comments. I try to answer everybody personally and if you have asked me a question, of course you're gonna miss a couple here and there, but I try to answer every question on every platform. If you're taking the time to watch my videos and support my channel, and I don't take the time to answer your question when you have asked, I just think that's rude. So I am try so, so hard to get to all of your questions and answer them. So uh, just be patient if I don't get to you right away, but eventually I will get there and I will help you out. World's Greatest Grandma, another one for Mother's Day that is perfect. So here's two World's Greatest Grandma.